Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. How are you doing today? Uh, today we are very lucky. <clears throat> we have um, an exciting episode, you know, because we do have a special guest, Chris L. Dove. Uh, you know, she's joining us on the Dad Puzzles podcast, where we're going to, you know, dive into the stories and strategies to empower dads and families. And, um, you know, my special guest today, she's truly dynamic. I know she she's not only a dedicated mother, but she's a successful author, financial guru, and a pioneer in the world of financial psychology. So uh, Chris helps individuals and families unlock the often overlooked emotional side of money, um, you know, and she's guiding them to make smarter, more intentional financial decisions. So this is really amazing. And, and uh, so please pay attention and, uh, you know, uh, let's see what we can, uh, you know, what we can learn from our special guest. Thank you again, Chris, for joining. Thank you for the introduction. I'm so pleased and honored to be on the podcast today. Oh, uh, thank you. Thrilled when you reached out about having me, mm. and what a great opportunity to speak to fathers. Um, and and it's so important to pass down um, the the. Our, our wisdom about finances and and managing money. Amazing, that is true. Thank you so much for truly accepting to do this because really our goal to speak as to as many uh, successful parents or parents that are going through it, but they have some wisdom from it so that we can learn from that so that people that are in the similar situation, they can learn and do better. You know, you know that's truly our goal. Yes, yes. yes, that's yes. One <laughs> awesome awesome yeah because you know like sometimes you know like one of the other goal i was thinking okay so we're trying to in, you know enrich fathers with with the knowledge you know or parents in general because we have single moms and single dads you yes. know this is uh so besides just sharing the the techniques or some some information about how to raise their kids better you know i want them to also be financially independent so that they can have the time more time with the kids because sometimes you know we have folks uh their career demands them to be not available most of the most of the, the time you know like throughout the week or even sometimes over the weekend so it's very hard to talk to those kind of dads and you know uh making them feel like they're not they're not doing enough but in reality life is pushing them to do so much outside the family so yes. we are happy that you're here so maybe you can show us some ways that we can deal with the with the finance that we you know with a little bit of finance that we have so we can make it more more useful you know like more blessed i guess you know yes yes and i i do work with i work with a lot of clients who think i i'm not far enough ahead to manage my money or to start investing or to have a plan but right. of you don't manage your money and start investing and have a plan then you never get to the point where you <laughs> you never oh. Point where you have enough that you feel you need to manage. Um, it's you, you have to start somewhere, even if you're working with a dollar, because ultimately time is the, like you said, time is the resource that we want. It's the resource that we, when we have children, we're highly aware of how little we have. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And and for me and my clients, wealth is about financial independence and it's about reclaiming time and autonomy. Amazing. So you do have a degree in financial psychology, correct? I do. My degree is in financial planning and financial psychology. Um, financial planning, I think people know what that is. Right. Fin psychology is a little more mysterious. It's a new kind of budding field, but okay. it looks at how our brain wiring, how our beliefs about money, how our habits influence our financial outcomes. And maybe that's our culture, our childhood socialization, our personal experience. But we internalize all of these things based on what generation we're in, whether we grew up urban or rural or our socioeconomic status. And then directly and indirectly, all of these things constantly influence our financial outcomes. And so as a coach and consultant, I try to help people get out of the way of their own success because a lot of our barriers, unfortunately, are internal. Right. Oh, yeah, this is a this is a big one. I think most of the time, you know, like, uh, you know, they say that, uh, 
we are because of our traditions or based on what, you know, like whether it's your family or like you say, your culture, all those things, they're really embedded in us. So we make decisions. Even speaking is from like, I'm noticing now I'm speaking just like my dad. But in reality, <laughs> after, you know, studying a little bit about, you know, speech and everything, yeah. there is no like, oh, yeah, this is how I speak. There's so much you can do with your speech. Yes, yes. And sometimes it seems foreign, but we're taking things that we are, we are, um, that we are brought up with. So this is uh, definitely, that's the psychology part of it. Thank you for sharing, you know. I remember the first time I heard my father's words come out of my mouth. My mm -hmm. children were um, carrying plates from a buffet, like paper plates mm -hmm. on hand, and you could see things were wobbly. Mm -hmm. And I two hands for beginners. And I thought, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I, was that my dad's words coming out of my mouth? <laughs> oh man, you see? We are, we are the product of, you know, we are very much the product of our upbringing. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. So, so how do you help your clients so far? You know, like so far you say you help them to kind of get rid of that. So, you know, like in terms of their things that are putting, you know, that are blocking them from having that financial, you know, like, you know, the success. So how do you do that? Yeah. So a lot, I, the, it starts with unlearning because, mm -hmm. Um, we all, we learn things and some of things are, are incomplete or myths or misconceptions. Some things were true at one point in time, but they just mm -hmm. aren't any longer. You know, our parents might have done what was the best thing to do with money when when they were younger, um, but it's not, we don't live in the same reality now. And so then it's filling in holes and gaps in people's financial knowledge and educating them. Um, but awareness, unfortunately, awareness doesn't always change habits. We know this mm -hmm. from fitness and diet, right? You mm -hmm. can know what healthy food is and you know you should work out, but it doesn't mean you're going to eat healthy food or work out. And the same thing with finance. Um, there's a lot of people who understand what to do, but it doesn't mean they'll do it. And a lot of that gets to motivation, um, mm -hmm environmental structure, like automating things so that you don't have to make those decisions ongoing, or um, maybe putting together a budget. Like the way people learn to budget mm -hmm. is, um, or the way we imagine budgets is often very primitive um, and this restrictive thing where I think of budgeting as a way to allocate your money as a way to have more freedom, not less. And mm -hmm. so like, for instance, um, I think of it like um, your clothing in your closet. If right. you threw all your clothes on the ground, that's not having a budget, right? But hanging them up, that's how you have a budget. You're organizing your money. And mm -hmm. I might organize my money very differently than you, but we mm -hmm. both need a system. And right is that system. So I help people get that into place ultimately with the goal of creating a cushion for emergencies and an investment so that they have um, the ability to work less, um, go back to school, take time off for their children, mm -hmm. or start their own business. Like people want to be in a place where they can chase their passions and do things. Um, and then ultimately, if you, to, to get to raising children differently, you have to change yourself first. You can't teach children what you don't know. Right. Um, and so you have to really work on your own finances at the same time you're teaching children. Want real results that last? Stop wasting time on quick fixes. A no-fat approach to sustainable fitness, radiant health, and mental well-being is your roadmap to lasting transformation. Learn how to fuel your body, move with joy, and cultivate mental strength, all without the restrictive rules. Start your journey to sustainable success. Download your guide today. Who's on the ground, that's not having a budget, right? But hanging them up, that's how you have a budget. You're organizing your money. And I might organize my money very differently than you, but we both need a system. And thing right. is that system. So I help people get that into place, ultimately with the goal of creating a cushion for emergencies and an investment so that they have... Um, the ability to work less, um, go back to school, take time off for their children, or start their own business. Like people want to 
be in a place where they can chase their passions and do things. Um, and then ultimately, if you, to, to get to raising children differently, you have to change yourself first. You can't teach children what you don't know. Right. Um, and so you have to really work on your own finances at the same time you're teaching children finances. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Thank you. I think those are so many great points that uh, I'll definitely make sure that we pay attention to them. And, uh, you know, folks that are watching, we, you know, we can create a summary for them to, you know, make sure they pay attention to that. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, this great, pro you know, project that you have at the moment? You're writing a book and, you know, can you talk a little bit about it? I am. I'm writing a book called Beyond the Piggy Bank, Passing Wealth and Wisdom to the Next Generation. Okay. And it's early stages. Um, mm -hmm. I'm getting, I, I'm sort of dabbling in writing in different parts of it. But mm -hmm. it, it's really important to me to get this out. Um, but it's also, and there are some good books out there. But what I want to do is start with a principle and then talk about how to apply it in life and then talk about how to demonstrate it and then talk mm -hmm. about how to introduce it to children. Okay. What motivated you to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to get on these projects, you know, like you mentioned? There's a few things. One is that almost every time I work with anybody at some point, mm -hmm. they say, I wish I learned this in school. I wish I earlier. I wish I started investing earlier. Um, and then even for myself, I didn't learn about finance and I didn't learn about finance until my children were older. So I missed all those crucial years. I mean, ultimately the reason I'm writing this is for my children. So my mm -hmm. children have a blueprint to teach what I didn't know when they were toddlers, when they were okay. at those young ages. Mm -hmm. And um, when it comes to wealth, time's your best friend, you know, mm -hmm. You can't, the magic of compounding takes time. And so a dollar, I always tell my daughter, a, her putting a dollar in is equal to me putting 10,000 in, right? Mm -hmm. um, it sh time is this magical thing. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it is just, can we get this information to the youngest people who have the most time to take advantage of wealth building? Okay, okay. Yeah, this is, I think, also tied up to what you have learned so far, you know, about, the, you know, like your personal finances growing up. Is there anything else that, uh, you know, besides the value of it, uh, you know, like any other point that you think, uh, you know, like what else have you learned, you know, like growing up about finances? Yeah, they are my parents. And interesting, my parents came from sort of a quieter generation. They didn't mm -hmm. talk about a lot. Um, a lot of what we learned was through watching. But mm -hmm. one thing my parents did teach me, and it's not directly finance, um, okay. but they taught me to value education. They taught me to be a lifelong learner. Um, my Par my parents, particularly my father, always had a book in his hand, and there was at least one more on the coffee table and one more beside his bed. Every we would divvy up the newspaper, passing the sections back and forth, reading them. Amazing. And they taught me to be curious and to take mm -hmm. chances. Um, they didn't talk much about our budget, but it was obvious we had one until I was a teenager. And then right. uh, I was given a credit card to which had like a certain amount of money on it that was for my budget for clothing for the year. And I remember the first time I blew it all in a couple days. And that winter, I really wished I had money on the card to buy warm clothes. Right. And um, and they taught me to prioritize experiences over things. We would mm. go vacations every year and my sister and I would sit for hours flipping through a book of resorts seeing do we want tennis courts do we want a mm -hmm. swimming pool and debating what we cared the most about teaching us to comparison shop and ne to negotiate and compromise mm -hmm. and I remember like going into the bank with them to open my first savings account um, and and just these these big money moments right <laughs> right 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 Amazing, amazing. So what advice do you have for dads that are, you know, that are listening at the moment? So, you know, how can they set up their children for success? In, uh, uh, let's see, so many things. The first is right. don't assume your children will learn what they need to know elsewhere. Assume mm -hmm. that you have to teach them everything that they need to know about money. Um, 
take opportunities to introduce them to currencies when they're really little. You know, this is, um, you know, uh, this is what this is worth. This is, you know, what you could buy with it. Um, teach them to calculate, to, to add and subtract and use money to teach them math. Um, really important differentiating between wants and needs as early as per possible. Mm -hmm. This is what I want. This is what I need. And I have my clients teach their children to have their teach their children to invest 20% of their allowance, their earned money, mm -hmm. um, to get used to allocating their money mm -hmm. and to give teach them to give to charity is something you could do with either money or time or both right. um and then even if they're small helping them set realistic and achievable financial goals like mm -hmm. i'm gonna save for a bicycle i'm going to save to go to an amusement park um and, and teaching them to delay gratification so i always talk about with allowance or if you pay children give them enough to have some things they want but not everything they want so they have to save they have to make choices okay. um, yeah and then encouraging an entrepreneurial mindset um have them do a lemonade stand or start mm -hmm. some kind of business um and then if you catch a myth coming out of their mouth bust it right. <laughs> right. That's a great point. And also, I think you, with this, you'll be killing two, uh, you know, I like, you know, I, you know, I'm one of those that used to say, I love to say a lot, sometimes you're killing two birds, you know, so, you know, you know, you know, like sometimes three with the same stone, because now you're fixing their psychology. Now you, you're, you're making sure that they're growing up with the right psychology. Yeah. So that when they grow up, they don't have these limitations, you know? And yep. I think this is amazing. And, and I like, uh, you know, the, you know, like the myth busting, uh, this is great for there's an aspect that you mentioned about um we be the first teachers you know this is a very good thing i think uh i cannot you know we, you know um me and my wife we always like to say like you know let's be the first teachers to our kids in a sense that you yeah. know for my girls i make sure that I, I i do things that in the future they're not going to be surprised by somebody doing something to them to seem to be like foreign because they're not used to that Yes. Yeah. Right. So I, I guess this, this definitely should apply to like you mentioned, anything that we think, you know, like if it's finances or anything, anything that we can teach firsthand, be the first teacher, I think is more memorable to them. I think this is yeah. a very great point. Yes. That exposure. Yeah. And I think if I, I've thought of a few more <laughs> right. is that to teach them to run their own race, not to, compare so they're not keeping up with the joneses for the rest of their life and not succumbing to fear of missing out right and yeah. remember that they learn what you do more than what you say right, <laughs> right? if you model the behavior you want to instill because if you say don't do something that you're doing they will surely do it um, and then nothing is more valuable than the time you spend with them um, I think a lot of parents feel the need to buy their children everything and anything and everything. Mm -hmm. But what's really important at the end is is every minute spent together being precious and not to necessarily sacrifice our time to have a little bit more money to buy a little bit more stuff mm -hmm. when time is, is what really is going to have an impact in the long run. That is true. And I'm fortunate to realize that before it's too late on my second, you know, like I have been, the reason I chose, you know, uh, this remote work and such, because I wanted to spend that, that time more with them, you know, whether it's dropping them off to, you know, like in the morning to school or picking them up or, you know, like these games, all these things, I think is an amazing thing that um, I didn't have that, but I'm trying to, you know, make it end with me by doing that to them. So hopefully they they will also make an effort to make sure that they are there for their kids as well. Yes. I think, I think the only thing that I'm missing sometimes is like, sometimes I'm doing things that I say, if it's, uh, is it traditional? Like if it's, uh, you know, like, you know, the prayers, all the things I don't involve as much, but I need to, to be remind, you know, like I'm reminded by my wife, you know, to really try to, you know, make sure that, uh, even if they're busy, do it <laughs> in front of them, because sometimes I can do it, you know, like in my own privacy in the office or something like that you know, but it's good to kind of do things in the exposure, even if you don't really, 
may, you know, annoy them by cutting them off, whatever they're doing, so they can, you know, like do it with you. At least let them see you. I think yeah. this is a great point because they will always remember. Oh yeah, Baba used to read, as you know, this book at you know at this time, even though he was busy. Or oh, Baba used to pray at this time. You know, like those yeah. things. They 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 definitely will remember you for it because now that we know how how um, how temporary the life is, so it is good to really you know leave it the the way we want it to to be when we are you know we're not here so amazing my friend thank you so much Chris and um, is there any other questions or any other ideas that came through uh, you know as we speak that you um, uh, you know that you want to share or what's your analysis about dad puzzles you know this is another this is just a side side question after mm -hmm. after the first question um, okay. <laughs> I have two questions you know first if you have any you know extra information as we have you know based on what we have spoken about. Um, um, and, mm -hmm. The extra information is, and I think this is more, um, I talk a lot about like a wealthy mindset versus right. like a poor middle-class mindset. Mm -hmm. And how, and one thing is, is to go find that information. How do people who are wealthy look at things differently, approach things differently? Because mm -hmm. one thing I keep coming across is um, like, when you're when you're middle class or poor, you tend to focus on how much you make your salary. But when somebody is wealthy, they focus on their net worth. And mm -hmm. so we're taught generally if we buy if we're a grow up poor middle class, we're taught um, to purchase that our money is for purchasing to buy mm -hmm. things we want and like. And those things, unfortunately, if you look back ten years ago, you see not many of them last. There are usually appreciating assets. They're things that will be gone over time, where when people grow up wealthy, they're taught to buy assets, um, investments, whether it's real estate or stocks, they're taught to buy things that will produce over time. And it's very, very important to get in that mindset, to get in the mindset of buying things that will be worth more. Tired of fads and frustration? Build sustainable wellness for life. Forget quick fixes that fail to deliver lasting results. Imagine feeling energized, moving confidently, and radiating health for years. Achieving true wellness isn't about exhaustion or deprivation. It's about building habits that fit seamlessly into your life. Invest in yourself today for lasting fitness, radiant health, and mental well-being. Ready to transform your life? Click here to learn more. By purchasing the book, you'll gain lifetime access to updates, newsletters, future editions, and exclusive wellness bonuses from the author. Start your journey to wellness now. How do people who are wealthy look at things differently, approach things differently? Because one thing I keep coming across is um, like when you're when you're middle class or poor, you tend to focus on how much you make your salary. But when somebody is wealthy, they focus on their net worth. And so we're taught generally if we buy, if we're a grow up poor middle class, we're taught um, to purchase that our money is for purchasing to buy things we want and like, and those things, unfortunately, if you look back 10 years ago, you see not many of them last. There are usually appreciating assets. They're things that will be gone over time, where when people grow up wealthy, they're taught to buy assets, um, investments, whether it's real estate or stocks, they're taught to buy things that will produce over time. And it's very, very important to get in that mindset, to get in the mindset of buying things that will be worth more in the future rather than less and buying things that will pay you dividends or interest or rent. Because ultimately, if you can't produce a large enough mass, a mass, a large enough amount of wealth, you'll have to work forever. Um, you'll never be able to step off the treadmill and and be there for your children and your grandchildren and hopefully great grandchildren. <laughs> right, right. That's a that's a great point. That's a great point. You know, like I, I think, uh, you know, there are a couple of things that come to mind when you're mentioning that. You know, it's like sometimes we we want to get comfortable with a temper, you know, with something that is relatively cheaper for now versus doing something big that will last us for some time. You know us and our kids, you know, this is a generational thing, you know? Yes. Um, amazing. Link 
and it's been 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, right. link in, in, t in another decade is gone. Oh. And then remind me the second question. <laughs> yes. So the second question I was just going to ask you about, uh, you know, about dad puzzles so far, you know, what do you think about these fatherhood projects and, you know, um, you know, it's, it's about fatherhood. And also I want to, you know, now I'm, ch I'm chatting about, you know, like parenthood and stuff, because, you know, like I mentioned, we have single dads, single moms. So yeah. that's why I speak to really everybody so we can yeah. learn from everyone mm -hmm. about fatherhood. And, you know, and sometimes also, you know, you know, ladies can be our daughters, you know, which they know us more than we know ourselves sometimes. So we can also learn from everybody because they can, if they're not fathers themselves, they can speak about their dads, you know, let's say, you know, what is the best thing they've learned from their dad so that we can, uh, you know, we can impact other folks. Like what you just mentioned, the story about the education from, from your dad and, you know, you know, and also how he raised you with, you know, with his, you know, with your mom, you know, uh, you know, like, you know, uh, rest in peace. How all that knowledge is very useful, right? It is. It is. And I was, um, you know, I, I think I told you when we when we first talked about my coming on, um, my children's father passed when he was 28. And so I mm -hmm. I took yes. uh, for different points in their life. I took what was typically a father role or, right. or took both roles and mm -hmm. in any single parent. Right. Single parents aren't fathers and mothers. They're everything. Right. <laughs> They're right. anything. Everything. Parents, yeah. <laughs> and Bless. and I think when you're in when you're in that position, there's no one to fall back on. Um, you need all the help you can get and all the good advice you can get. And I I love you know I've, I looked after you invited me on. I looked at your shows and I think yeah people and just to normalize to say like you're it, this is really hard and it's mm -hmm. really hard for everyone in your position and mm -hmm. and to just acknowledge that and and say you know, you're struggling, we're here with you struggling, mm -hmm. and here's, you know, some tips and tricks to make the Amazing. struggle a little bit less. <laughs> Amazing. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. You know, uh, yes, there's so many now, and actually I'm happy that with, there's so many other um, groups or, you know, you know, like podcasts or, you know, like organizations that are pioneering for, for that, you know, that they're, they're trying to speak out for dads and, 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 you know, and, and parenting in general, and it's definitely important, you know, we need that. And, you know, so we can learn, like yesterday, I was just chatting with it, with, uh, with, uh, you know, with a soon to be fellow father, and uh, he's a coach himself, and he was happy um, with what we're doing. And also he's familiar with most of the stuff now that, that he's supposed to be doing and stuff. And he will be in touch if he, have been, if he has any questions, but it's amazing to see people that are in you know, that are beginning the journey and they're, they're learning from people that have, you know, that have been there before. That's, yeah. I think that's how we make the impact as, you know, that's our legacy, I guess. I think so. And so many, I remember when I had my son, my son's my oldest child, mm -hmm. um, my father, when my father had us, mm -hmm. fathers couldn't come in the delivery room. And he was right. so excited to come in. <laughs> this is, he came running in with a camera and I went, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> But he, no doubt there, buddy. <laughs> but he he cut it my was nice. Son. It was amazing, yes. yes. But he cut That's... my umbilical cord, my father did. And, amazing. Yes. And he was so happy to be there, you know. I I share his uh I, you know, I share his uh you know his you know his excitement because that's how that's how it was with my wife and and you know later on she's watching she said, Why did you take all these pictures? You know, for me I'm just excited, you know, for you know, yeah. but, uh, but it's good memories. You know, I think you enjoy those moments, you know, especially yeah. you'll get to, to appreciate them more because with COVID we did not, I did not make it to, um, to two of the deliveries because of the COVID because, because my kids were born in the COVID era, two of them. So I didn't get to attend to two of those deliveries. Oh, I, was, my I was doing that, uh, you know, like over the zoom call, you know, imagine <laughs> that, you know, cause of the limitations and stuff we understand. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember when my mother was in a nursing home, I remember standing outside her window, talking mm -hmm. to her on the phone and touching mm -hmm. hands through the oh. window. It was a very tough time to stay connected. 
Absolutely. Yeah. But we survived tend that we have some people that, you know, you know, many folks, they lost their, their loved ones. And uh, I'm grateful that we're still here. And, um, yeah. you know, there's so many politics behind it. We're not going to delve into it. You know how it is. Everything has politics. Yes. But, um, <laughs> but gratitude is always there, you know, whether there's politics or not. We're grateful that we're still here. Me and you, we're chatting about, you know, like parenthood and how we can make it better and how we can improve our generations going forward. So yeah. truly this, <laughs> please go ahead, my friend. Oh, I was going to say, and grateful that I'm having a conversation with someone who's not in the same country live on, <laughs> you know, live on social media. What oh, yes, yes. No, actually I came back. I remember I went to, when you were speaking, I had lost my uh, in-law. Uh, you know, I had traveled to Morocco. I yeah. told you. I came back, everything. Oh, you're back. back. Yes, I am back. I am back. Imagine if, if I had that long of a break, I think I'll be, uh, um, you know, not, I'll be free, you know, for, you know, or, you know, one of those like the financially <laughs> free people that can roam. And if you, no, I'm not that, I'm not there yet. <laughs> but soon, soon I hope. <laughs> oh, yeah. So tell me about it. So, but thank you so much, really. Uh, you know, this has been a great episode, I, you know, and you have brought so much wisdom from understanding the deeper psychology of our financial choices, you know, and those practical steps you mentioned there, you know, I hope parents can really take, you know, take note and ensure that their kids, they thrive financially going forward. Um, if there's any, you know, like, you know, one takeaway from this conversation is that, you know, the, the building the financial success starts from changing the way we think, talk about money, you know, right? Yeah, how we, so, how we so talk, this, how we mm -hmm. act. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. So be sure to keep an eye out for her upcoming book, which is coming up soon, I hope, right? Uh, hopefully next year. I hope it'll come out next year. Amazing. Well, you know, <laughs> we have to sell it here too. You know, we look forward to that. And if you found any value today, please uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe so we can keep bringing you more insightful conversations. And until next time, please keep building those stronger family foundations, one puzzle piece at a time. Thanks so much. Chris, thanks so much, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So that's...